there is a huge challenge in terms of how do you address cost of innovation, the risks associated with innovation and you know address growth in terms of market opportunities. And today India I think provides very, very strong solutions for those kind of challenges. And that is why I think a lot of western companies both big pharma, biotech and small biotechs are beginning to look at a partnered approach to drug innovation uh, where India finds a very worthy place. It is a tremendous place to be if you really want to actually develop technologies. Cost of innovation is another factor. Cost of innovation is certainly much lower in India, but that is not the only thing. You also have the talent and you also have the capabilities for innovation and development of products. Now, there are many, many examples. You know, take the case of our own company, Metahedics Life Sciences. We have technologies that can confer insect protection traits in crops, some of it which has been already approved. We are developing technologies that can confer virus protection in vegetables, you know, increase tolerance to certain herbicides so that the drudgery can be removed from agriculture. Now, other than that, us, you know, there are many other players. You, know, you have got the big global players like Monsanto, for example. They are very active in the Indian market. And they also have a huge research center in this country to cater to the global needs of research and innovation. Pioneer, one of the largest seed companies in the world, which is now being owned by DuPont, has set up a huge research center in this country. Several other Indian companies like Advanta, for example, or Mahiko, or JK Seeds, or Nath Seeds, they all have started in investing more and more into research and development of products. I think a large number of Indian biotech companies have already shown the way. Now, you know, starting with our own company, uh, Biocon, you know, we have entered into some very important strategic partnerships, you know, in the research services uh, space, we have a very, very strong and growing partnership with companies like Bristol Myers Squibb. Uh, on the drug development side, we have entered into very interesting partnerships to address this whole opportunity of affordable cutting edge innovation. Now, if you look at other companies that have done the same, uh, I think GVK Bio, Jubilant Biosciences, they have done the same in the area of research services with Eli Lilly, Wyatt and other companies. Vaccines is of course a very, very good example of how India is already beginning to be perceived uh, in a leadership uh, way in this space. So whether you look at the recent acquisition of Shanta Biotech by Sanofi Aventis, whether you look at how Serum Institute is you know, perceived to be one of the very large players in the vaccine segment and so on and so forth, I think clearly tells you that vaccines is always uh, an area where they need low cost production, where they need uh, trials which can bring these products faster to the market and that is what these companies have done. And then you have got the second tier of companies, you know, whether it is uh, uh, Advinus, whether it is, uh, you know, Intas, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, Panacea Biotech, all these companies are beginning to start addressing these global opportunities that the biopharma and in general the biotech uh, uh, space offers. What has happened since the start of the millennium is that the excitement about all the areas of biotechnology has, uh, has taken root and uh, we see many young people now motivated to, to study in these areas and many academic programs that have sprung up all over the country. Uh, we are starting to see a lot of public money now flowing towards creating excellence in, in research and research manpower. The Department of Biotechnology has increased its funding 16-fold over the last few years. 
uh, and uh, so today uh, the funding of uh, stem cell institutes, uh, institutes for translational research uh, are all activities that DBT is, uh, is deeply involved in. icing on the cake is of course the growing Indian market. I think it is very clear today that countries like India are providing that growth trajectory that companies are looking for simply because western markets have become saturated. And of course, this whole emphasis on affordable healthcare models both in Europe and US is making it almost mandatory for companies to look at how they can do things more cost effectively. So, India has a very important role to play in all of this. If you just take the last few years, we have had the introduction of insect protected cotton technology. It has been a tremendous success. You know, the country's cotton production has more than doubled in the last six, seven years since the introduction of this technology. Today we are the second largest producer of cotton. We used to be an importer of cotton. Today we are net exporters of cotton, probably the largest exporter of cotton in the world. And all the cotton farmers of this country have benefited. Look at what the government of India has done. It has initiated some very, very strong uh, support by way of providing risk capital. Very innovative schemes have been introduced for the biotech sector. The government of India has also introduced tax ops, which actually augment and incentivize R&D. The government of India also has created an SEZ policy for biotechnology, which makes it possible for small, large and medium sized biotech companies to uh, derive the benefits that the uh, SEZs or special economic zones provide to such high tech industries. Today patenting, licensing, both in licensing and out licensing are becoming much simpler, much easier. So, bioenergy can be a very, very valuable and a very, very important sector for growth in future. Already there are legislations by the government which allow the use of 5 to 10 percent of biofuels along with the petrol or the gasoline that can be used in cars. There are schemes by which, you know, there is either a subsidy or an incentive for developing products that can cater to the bioenergy or the biofuel sector. That's going to be very, very important in future. We spent the last 10 years really focusing on building skills, specialized skills, capacity building, uh, you know, creating the right infrastructure that can actually scale up. So, you have to then leverage the scale and capacity building uh, over the next 10 years and to me, this 25 percent compounded annual growth rate will only be much faster and much larger because there are a number of factors that make me believe that this is possible because you are going to see uh, a much larger market opportunity, you are going to see a much larger service uh, opportunity, you are going to see a much larger, larger innovation focus. So, I think all in all, the Indian biotech sector has a very strong and robust future. We may not be there as yet, but if you do not come in now, it may be too late, you might have already missed the bus. So, the time is to come into this country now, not just to leverage the market that is there, but also to leverage the kind of talent that is available, the demographic dividend that is there. Not to just to service the market in this country, but all, uh, also throughout the world. Yeah.